dear friends welcome to this edition of uh, uh, vbs anatomica we will start this series on uh, no a series of lecture videos with demonstration from actual specimens of uh, this is a first video it's a general introduction to the nose it it introduces you to the design of the cavity of the nose its walls and roughly uh, its uh, immediate uh, uh, surrounding structures or relations in other words location and orientation now i am doctor Bala Subramanian. I work here at Saint John's Medical College, Bangalore, as a professor. Now, this is the first slide: Norma frontalis, dry skull. You can see the outline of the uh, nasal cavity, the anterior, uh, the so-called piriform aperture. Now, right in the middle, you can see the bony part of the nasal septum. Let's start with it. The cavity, as as such, as reflected by the anterior aperture or the piriform, is appears triangular. Seems to have two halves, a right half and a left half. Nasal septum is uh, uh, common to both the halves. base is broader the apex is higher up and uh, um, we will we will we will see how it is uh, uh, pushed uh, between the two orbits now that's the lateral wall you can see the sloping lateral wall whereas the central septum is uh, right in the sagittal plane it is vertical whereas the lateral wall as seen in the anterior view appears to uh, converge like a tent towards the roof obviously the roof is going to be very very narrow uh, compared to the base now that's the base by and large you can see that the lateral wall is uh, wall and the base is uh, made up of uh, the maxilla uh, bone largely there are other components we will see it in fine detail in the future of videos here is a coronal section of the head region uh, once again the septum is very clearly visible uh, i have labeled it uh, next again the lateral wall as seen in the this this reflects the true cavitary structure of the nasal cavity unlike the vertical plane uh, septum the lateral wall seems to have a lot of shelf like projections now those projections are the concha uh, again finer details in a future lecture but right now suffice to understand that uh, below these shelf like projections called concha there is a cavity uh, these cavity are called the um, meatuses that means there are three concha inferior middle and superior correspondingly below each are the three meatuses next that is the floor again the palatine process of the maxilla is the bone that forms this however there may be there is an additional contribution uh, more posteriorly by the palatine bone uh, here is a horizontal section of the neck the nasal area the nasal cavity is reasonably well seen you can see once again the lateral wall septum and when you trace the lateral wall forwards uh, there is a, a flexible component of the lateral wall that means there is no bone little bit cartilage and skin mucous membrane inside now that area right in front in the visible part of the nose is the ala now this is an important uh, photograph to be 
understood because this gives you a general orientation to the uh, other cavitary structures in and around the uh, nasal principal nasal cavity like for example here i have removed the outer table of the skull and reflected it out and uh, inside uh, once that is reflected out the frontal outline of the frontal air sinus is very clearly visible these sinuses are important because one they are in close vicinity to the nasal cavity second they drain into the nasal cavity uh, through the lateral wall hence it becomes very very important also note that immediately lateral to the nasal cavity are the orbits and superiorly as shown in the label right above is the frontal air sinus now the location of the ethmoid layer sinus is shown here it is sandwiched between the orbit laterally and the nasal cavity medially that means as you trace the lateral wall superiorly the lateral wall is pushed more and more medially closer to the roof and that space is occupied by the uh, ethmoid air sinus that's one of the reasons why the lateral wall slopes uh, towards the medial side as it is traced superiorly details we will see in one of the next few slides now that, that is the huge maxillary air sinus uh, we will open it and see yeah. next here is a very interesting uh, photograph yeah, yeah next step of the previous photograph where what we have done is we have removed the entire uh, frontal sinus and made a horizontal section through the bone exactly as it cuts through the uh, ethmoidal air sinus and uh, and right there you can see the nasal septum to guide you the lateral wall is partly cut the lower half of the lateral wall and the lower half of the uh, nasal septum is visible now those are the ethmoidal sinus watch carefully this ethmoidal sinus is sandwiched between the orbit laterally and the nasal cavity uh, medially this is very very important and a very very useful slide to understand this relationship now once again maxillary air sinus we are, we are yet to see it in detail next now the front layer sinus is closed but watch carefully the maxillary air sinuses are opened out uh, like a window once again the location of the ethmoid layer sinus is just labeled but very very clearly seen is the cavity of the maxillary air sinus once again corona well, we're going back to the coronal section because we have we have finished the brief introduction to the three sinuses uh, around the nasal cavity back to the coronal section the label hard palate as already mentioned the palatine process of the maxilla the roof is now brought into the discussion so far we only saw the septum that is a medial wall the floor namely the palatine process of the maxilla predominantly and the lateral wall mainly maxilla but there are other bones like little bit of ethmoidal um, the inferior nasal concha and and more posteriorly the uh, medial pterygoid plate but then finer details we will take it up a little later nevertheless roof is worth discussing at this stage it's a very it's a narrow roof and that whatever little roof is there is perforated and it is in uh, communication although separated through the perforations it is sub in continuity with the anterior cranial fossa you can see part of the frontal lobe of the brain now that perforation the cribriform nature of this plate is for the olfactory fibers to reach the olfactory bulb now, this is just in passing below the hard palate the location of the tongue the dorsum of the tongue the mucosa of the dorsum of the tongue is shown here again the maxillary sinus is lateral to the uh, lateral wall of the uh, cavity and it is immediately below the orbit in fact the floor of the orbit is also the roof of the maxillary air sinus now you see orbit and its contents the same orbit you can see on this side also this is not exactly a horizontal i mean uh, yeah uh, coronal there is a slight obliquity hence there is a discrepancy in the size of the orbital cavities 
Now, once again, the ethmoid sinus in cross section is beautifully seen, and the ethmoid sinus is sandwiched between the orbit and its contents laterally against the me and uh, medially the nasal cavity. Now, same photograph on a CT scan coronal section. Now, you see again, now you have the general orientation of the nasal cavity, the broader floor and the narrow roof is very, very obvious. The sloping lateral wall is obvious. The shelf-like projections in the lateral wall called the conche are obvious. The meatuses immediately below the conche are also obvious. In a, in a CT scan, now we are able to identify a huge maxillary sinus as pointed by the label. Right above the maxillary sinus is the orbital cavity and its contents. You can see the, you know, vague outline, a dull outline of uh, the orb uh, eyeball and the eyeball muscles around it. Now, that's the orbit and contents. That's the ethmoid sin air sinus. Uh, because it's a uh, coronal section, it's very difficult to exactly say whether it is anterior, middle or the posterior. Nevertheless, the, it is a uh, one component of the ethmoid sinus. There are three sinuses in the ethmoidal complex, anterior, middle and posterior. Now, you can also see the anterior cranial fossa uh, above the roof. Now, we need to discuss the lateral wall a little in detail. Remember, the nasal septum is a separate video in, in its entirety. Likewise, the lateral wall will also be discussed in a separate video in complete detail. However, certain introductory components of the lateral wall which will fit into the general orientation of the nasal cavity will be discussed here. Now, that's a dry skull sagittal section that gives you a rough coverage of the lateral wall as shown by the um, dashed uh, blue white uh, oval. That's the lateral wall. Now, you see above the um, outline of the lateral wall, the anterior cranial fossa has been labeled. Now, this is not a dry skull, this is an actual wet specimen, I repeat, actual wet specimen, I borrowed it from the museum. Again, I have outlined the lateral wall to, to bring your attention to that wall. Note the folded nature of the wall, you know, there are a lot of shelf-like projections projecting down from the lateral wall. Watch those carefully. You see, let's zoom in into that encircled area of the previous slide and we are having it in greater detail. Watch first, among other things, the roof. That roof, I have called it as the cribriform plate. The roof also extends a little in front and that, that part that slopes for sloping downwards and forwards is the anterior extension of the roof. That is the frontonasal part. Similarly, Behind the cribriform plate, a part, part of the sphenoidal uh, sinus anterior wall also forms the roof. Um, therefore, the roof has a, a cribriform plate, the principal area for the roof, an anterior slope and a posterior slope. The anterior slope is the frontonasal part and the posterior uh, slope is the sphenoidal part. Next, behind the nose, you can see the area labeled as the nasopharynx. Roughly, if you notice, the, there is a hard palate right below. Uh, at the posterior end of the hard palate, you can see the soft palate. The area immediately above is a, a rough a high estimate of the uh, outline of the nasopharynx. Now, that's the sphenoidal air sinus. See that there is a wall separating the sinus from the a vertical wall, anterior wall, separating it from the nasal cavity. Now, that is the hot palate and for reference, the tongue has also been labeled immediately below. Now, that is the soft palate and therefore, the area immediately above it is the nasopharynx. Cribriform plate relabeled for uh, focus. Note that the olfactory fibers, uh, thin fibers, uh, Vertical fibers of the olfactory nerve uh, are uh, very, very beautifully seen 
they are the ones that pierce the cribriform plate and reach the olfactory bulb of the anterior cranial fossa. Now, these two labels, the external nose and the anterior, uh, as you trace the anterior uh, slope of the roof downwards, it actually becomes the anterior wall of the nose as well as the ex external nose. Oh, this part, the anterior wall, projects forwards from the rest of the general contour of the face. As a result, there is a space below the tip of the nose, behind and below the tip of the nose. Uh, that is the anterior opening of the nasal cavity, the anterior nares. That, watch this carefully. This is an important mucocutaneous junction of the um, uh, body. Next. It's time we moved from a museum specimen to an actual dissection specimen. Usually the difference is in a museum specimen, it will be very neatly cleaned and you know, perfectly um, aligned and then mounted. But here, your dissection specimen, you can see the freshness as reflected by the shiny uh, surfaces. And um, uh, you can, it's invariably, you know, the, there will be other neighboring structures also available in there. Dissection. Now you see, among so many structures, let's identify one by one. The frontal sinus, as shown in a dry bone in one of the earlier uh, photographs, is re-identified here. Uh, that's the one. Next, the sphenoidal sinus, more posteriorly, is re-identified. Immediately below the sphenoidal sinus, the anterior opening of the eustachian tube is seen and forming a hood-like uh, structure around it is a ridge of uh, muzzle covered by mucous membrane. That ridge, I repeat, that ridge is the salpingo-laryngeal fold. That ridge is the salpingo-laryngeal fold. Because of the ridge, there is a small fossa behind it. Come back to the anterior end. Uh, from the frontal sinus, as you go down, you are reaching the external nose. Now, the external nose, the sagittal section inside, the you can see the uh, vestibule of the nose. This is the place where the skin projects a little interior into the interior of the uh, external nose. That's where you see a lot of uh, hair, uh, which we call vibrissae. At some point, uh, as you trace it above, it ends and the mucous membrane takes over this territory. Uh, immediately after entering the anterior nares, uh, first for the first few one or two centimeters is the vestibule of the nose. Next, again re-identifying the hard palate. Remember, every slide there are one or two uh, items repeating. The the uh, purpose of that is reinforcement of knowledge uh, in a different contexts and in different photographs so that. You become familiar with uh, um, the different specimens. Once again, behind the odd palette, you can see the soft palette. The uvula muzzle is also very clearly visible. Re-identifying the salpingopharyngeal fold uh, immediately above, about a centimeter above uh, uh, the, this thing. And right in front of the salpingopharyngeal fold is the anterior opening of the eustachian tube. Now, it's, that was a, a brief overview of the uh, interior of the nasal cavity, its walls and in other words, a general orientation uh, of the uh, position and uh, immediate relations of the uh, nasal cavity with a particular focus on the walls. Every area like the nasal septum, the lateral wall, the, the sinuses, each one has its own set of detailed lectures, uh, the links of which will be made available in the script immediately below the, um, uh, in, in the blog area immediately below this video on YouTube. It's time we uh, try to um, go through a few image based MCQs. MCQ number one identify the pointed structure you see that flashing item you have to identify what it is there are four options remember all the answers are given at the end of the video uh, 
what is that item actually we have seen this photograph in one of the earlier slides in today's discussion uh, just reorient yourself if necessary <coughs> go back to that slide and uh, learn the discussion <coughs> mcq number two again identify that point and structure what is it again these are all repeat from the previous slides the same but then the focus is on what is being asked at the paro tip next um, remember i am not giving uh, too much time on these mcqs because if you want you can always pause the slide or the video on any mcq for your own customized individual uh, study now what is this and uh, uh, what structure are we looking at it this is a ct scan of the head region again mcq number 4 identify the pointed cavity see remember the clue is already given i am not asking a wall or in i am specifically saying that that structure is a cavity what is that cavity the last mcq is this identify the pointed bone i am asking what bone is it i am not asking is that the piriform aperture well it's known the piriform aperture but then what bone forms it now you see those are the answer keys go back to the video pause it whichever slide you want and recheck uh, how, how the answer correlates with the question now that my dear friends was a, a brief overview of the introduction to the nasal cavity if you have any questions or any points to discuss here is my uh, email alternatively i would suggest you put it in the uh, blog area so that others can also uh, see your question and the answer so that the discussion details uh, are available uh, online for everybody thank you